Hello and welcome to the AMLE portfolio video. In this video we're going to be talking about what the portfolio is and how you can accomplish it. So, um, first up we're going to look at an overview of the AMLE portfolio standard, standards portfolio project. We're going to talk a little bit about what is evidence and we're going to look at each standard and some possible evidence associated with that standard. So first of all, the AMLE portfolio is designed to verify and reflect on your learning while you are, were at BCOE. So this is a culmination of the past couple of years of your education. This is not an assignment where you should slack off or even think about doing less than your absolute best. This is part of what leads to your student teaching process. So if we review this and we look at it and we say, you know, this student doesn't show the skills and disposition that are required of an educator, we cannot recommend them to go student teach. Now, you all do know and have the dispositions, I believe, but we need to be able to see evidence of that as well. So the portfolio project is very straightforward. You're going to review the AMLE standards, and each standard has several elements. You're going to use these elements to expand your understanding of each standard. It's not too difficult. In general, you're going to create a portfolio on task stream, although that might not be the first thing that you do. After reflection about each standard, list your assignments, projects, and activities that demonstrate you have met that standard. Next up, you're going to write a brief rationale for at least three to five of the standards. Aiming at five of five will ensure that you put your best foot forward. Now remember, this is something that you might be able to use in the future as you go out and look for employment. The educators that you talk to who are responsible for giving you a job later in life are going to be asking you questions about these things. How well do you engage with students? What do you do with diversity? If you can hand them a piece of evidence that demonstrates how well you handle diversity, you're much more likely to leave a favorable impression with that person. And then finally, kind of the last step of the project, is you write a general introduction. No more than one page. So, there's been some confusion about what evidence is. Evidence is something that supports a conclusion. In this instance, you want evidence to support a positive conclusion. For example, I wrote this reflective piece where I talk about my views on diversity and in <clears throat> integrity in education. Here it is. And then you attach your piece of evidence. Now, the question has also been given that we didn't do chapter reviews for 4801. Although, periodically throughout the semester, I did ask you to write some reflection pieces and do some reflection activities based in the chapter for the purpose of classroom discussion. That should serve as a basis for a lot of the evidence for these instances. Standard 1. Middle level teacher candidates understand, use, and reflect on the major concepts, principles, theories, and research related to young adolescent development and use that knowledge in their practice. Now, the substandards here are pretty straightforward. Element A. Knowledge of young adolescent development. Element B, knowledge of the implications of diversity on young adolescent development. Element C, implications of young adolescent development for middle level curriculum and instruction. Element D, implications of young adolescent development for middle level programs and practices. What we're looking for is some examples of where you've encountered these elements. That will be something that will fully provide evidence for Standard 1. Now, some suggested evidence is projects for TEMC 3702 or SPED 2630. Also, the aforementioned 4801 chapter reflections, which I've kind of had you do a select few throughout the course of the semester. If you feel that a chapter in 4801 that was not reviewed would be a significant benefit and provide you with evidence here, then you can write a reflection for that chapter, and I'll be more than happy to review it and give you some feedback to that. Standard two, 
This is talking about cultural, the central concepts, research, and structures, content plans. This is generally uh, demonstrating evidence that you know what you're doing, that you're able to engage uh, with the content with the students. So the substandards here are subject matter content knowledge, middle level, <coughs> excuse me, middle level student standards, and inter interdisciplinary nature of knowledge. So for example, when I talk about social studies being at the core of every good lesson, that's a demonstration of interdisciplinary content knowledge. No one area of content has a complete grasp on everything. So there's English language arts within science and there's mathematics within social studies. So some examples of evidence would be lesson plans, OAE scores. Now here you want to provide your most recent, and if you haven't passed yet, any planning and preparatory materials that you've accomplished. Something that you're pushing forward with. Uh, any assignments from TERG 37010 that will directly talk to the standard. Assignments from your content courses. So if you've done a rather brilliant activity in one of your content courses, that assignment would work as evidence here. Or assignments that deal with Common Core and State Standards. Now in uh, 4804, we did talk about State Standards and Common Core quite a bit. So maybe some things that you've done in that class. Standard 3. This is the major concepts, principles, theories, and research of underlying the philosophical foundations of developmentally responsive middle-level programs and schools. So this is where you're talking about meeting the needs of the middle grade student as opposed to the student in general. The substandards here are middle-level philosophical foundations and middle-level organization and best practices. And we've talked a lot about this in uh, 4801. As such, your philosophy of middle school paper, which you should be currently revising and rethinking, your field analysis report, so what does the middle school look like, faculty meetings at your field placement school, assignments from TEMC 3702, assignments from Foundation uh, 3708, Eden Society, and classroom management article. Now, we didn't do an article presentation in class, but we did discuss quite a few variety uh, quite a few aspects of classroom management and we looked at some research and practice of classroom management and implementation in middle grades. Standard 4. Middle level teacher candidates understand, use, and reflect on the major concepts, principles, theories, and research related to data informed instruction. This sounds a little bit scary but it's not necessarily. So here we're talking about content pedagogy. How are you going to be teaching your content? Now, I know you social studies people have a lot of that. And I know you math, science, and English language arts peoples do as well. How to best teach in your content area. Middle level instruction strategies. So what works best for middle grades? And finally, middle level assessment and data informed instruction. Some examples of suggested evidence here are the assessment article presentation. Again, we didn't do that particular activity in class, but we did talk about research articles in class and spend a lot of time engaging research articles. TERG 3703 assignments, uh, 4801. Uh, and here, since we're talking about assessment and data-informed instructions, that should really be 4804. And finally, lesson plans. For Standard 5, middle-level teacher candidates understand their complex roles as teachers of young adolescents. They engage in practices and behaviors that develop their competence as middle-level professionals. They are informed advocates, and so on and so forth. This one is very straightforward. So, how are you professional uh, role models, and what's your professional role of your, your teaching career? How are you going to advocate for young adolescents? In what ways do you work with family members? And what are the dispositions that you sh feel are your most significant dispositions? Some suggestion uh, evidence for this is the Family and Community Project, your FBI seminar, uh, 
If you're doing the stand up speak out, that is a particularly good piece of evidence for this, please. Uh, conference protection or professional organization meeting, coaches, leadership training, and attendance. Volunteer work with middle school students, such as Sunday school scouts, uh, uh, YS Unity teams, 4 H tutoring, if there's a Glezen at your school, anything like that. And finally, put it all together. When you put it together, review what you have in your portfolio. Do you have anything better to put in there? Anything that better exemplifies what you've done? And then finally, review it again. Make sure that you're putting your absolute best foot forward. Finally, call me, email me, schedule a meeting, text me, whatever. I'm here to help you out. I do much better with specific questions than I do with general questions. So if you say, is this a good piece of evidence for standard two? I'll be able to provide you with much better input into what's happening in your project than if you ask me the question, what is evidence? Okay, I hope that you're doing well and I look forward to seeing each of you soon.